Rex. Okay, those of you are uh, logged in online, uh, who wants to tell me what would be the first step? I think the uh, uh, lowest common denominator. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be uh, both x minus 2 and x plus 2, I think. Right. Okay. Very good. So um, you find the LCM, uh, which is x minus 2 times x plus 2. In this case, we have a difference of square here, difference of square. So that would be x minus 2 times x plus 2. Uh, the next step uh, to solve for x, can somebody tell me what's the next step after that? Anyone? OK. Uh, you're going to have to. Uh, the second one there, you're going to have to multiply by x plus 2. And the uh, third one, you're going to have to multiply by x minus 2. Well, Kevin, uh, you're trying to add these, looks like it. Uh, you're trying to. Whoops. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> add this. But it doesn't look like to add. Here. It says to solve. Uh, I mean, you can really add, you can add this to, and uh, and then and then uh, try to solve this by uh, make it look like a proportion. But there's an easier way. Some of you are already uh, in the chat room uh, uh, giving me the steps. But uh, those of you the microphone, who wants to tell me what would be the next step? Is it x minus two equals zero and x plus two equals zero? Uh, Karen, not yet because we haven't done uh, uh, we haven't made this into a linear equation yet uh, so yeah if at the end if that were x minus 2 times x plus 2 equal to 0 then you would be right uh, then we would say x minus 2 equal to 0 that would be one solution and x plus 2 equal to 0 that would be another solution but we have first we have to make this whole thing look like a linear equation without fraction how can we do that uh, we have to put like terms together by subtracting 1 over x minus 2 from both sides. OK, uh, Marvin, you're making this a lot harder than it is. Um, let me put the question this way. Uh, how can we eliminate the fractions? Who knows how to eliminate the fractions? Anyone? Go ahead. Okay, anyone? Multiply. Very good. Multiply. We multiply each term by. You multiply each term by LCM exactly. So that's the method. Uh, you find the LCM if you have an equation in in, uh, in terms of fraction. You find the LCM and you multiply each term by LCM. We have three terms here. The first one is x over x minus 2 times x plus 2. If I multiply this term here by LCM, by the way, this LCM, this is over 1, would be x minus 2 times x plus 2. By doing that, you would reduce the fraction, because right now, as you see, the next step should be uh, reducing. All this reduces. This is reduces 1. So the, the whole thing, the whole first fraction here, returns to just x. So that's all we do is we multiply each term by LCM, and then we get uh, to reduce the fraction. Some of them in the chat room says, what's LCM? Why well, thought it's LCD? The same thing. Some, some people call it LCM. Some people call it LCD. So it's le least common multiple or least common denominator. It's the same, same, same thing. OK, so let's do the same thing with the second uh, fraction. So the second fraction of x over x minus 2, if I multiply that with, with the LCM or LCD here and reduce 
Okay, you see what's going to happen here. Again, uh, x minus 2 and x minus 2 reduces to 1. And the second fraction turns to 2 times x plus 2. And then finally, the last term here, if I multiply it by, by that, LCM, this would be, uh, let's move this a little bit. equal to, this is the last term, right? If I multiply by L, LCM, then right away if I reduce, this whole thing would be equal to x minus 2. So you see how quickly I changed this equation in terms of fraction into a linear equation that I can simply solve for. This is this, this equation is exactly the same as this equation here, except one it looks like simpler to solve, right? It's, it's a lot easier to solve for this. Of course, the next uh, step is pretty easy, right? You just distribute. Here you get x plus 2x plus 4 is equal to x minus 2. And then we can combine uh, like terms left-hand side, I would get 3x plus 4 is equal to x minus 2. If I subtract x from both sides of the equation, and at the same time, if I subtract 4 from both sides of the equation, I can move all the x to one side of the equation. So we get 2x, the left-hand side, uh, and then right-hand side, I get minus 6. So here, if I divide both sides of the equation by 2, x would be equal to minus 6 over 2, which is equal to negative 3. OK. Uh, those of you with the microphone, if you have any comments or questions, now is a good time to go over it. Anyone? Okay, just quick review again. Uh, if you have an equation in, involving fractions like this, you find the LCM. You multiply each term by LCM. You don't add or subtract these, okay? Remember, you don't add them. You just simply multiply each term by LCD or LCM. And then you would get into a linear equation and then you solve for them. Now, there are some restrictions involved. There are some numbers that we cannot assign for uh, for x. Can somebody tell me what are those numbers? What is it that we cannot assign for x here for for this equation? Okay, anyone with the microphone? Say, Toby says zero. I don't understand what that means. Devon says x cannot be equal to 0. x, x can be equal to 0. If x equal to 0 here, we get 0 squared minus 4 would be minus 4. Nothing wrong with having minus 4 at the bottom of the fraction. But something uh, we cannot have for x here, for instance. Uh, is that x can equal 3? We just get 3, Kevin. Uh, I think I'm thinking of something else. <laughs> Sorry, I'm babysitting tonight, so I'm getting a little distracted. <laughs> no, that's okay, Kim, but just take a look at the second fraction here. We have 2 over x minus 2. Can you just tell me for the second fraction? Uh, well, yeah, in, in that yeah, I don't think in that case x can equal 2, right? Very good, 2. So you want to make sure that uh, what we have at the bottom of the fraction right here cannot be equal to 0. This whole thing cannot be equal to 0. Because if you have something over 0, then you have undefined. That expression would be undefined. So you have to make a note that x minus 2 cannot be equal to 0. Therefore, x cannot be equal to 2. And then we have x 
plus 2 cannot be equal to 0, so x cannot be equal to negative 2. So you have to make these statements at the very beginning of the problem. So when you solve this whole thing, if it turns out to uh, get one of these solutions as a final answer, then you exclude them as a part of a real solution. You cannot have x equal to 2 or negative 2 because those values would cause these uh, fractions would become undefined. Okay, that's how you solve 4x.